In this video, I will show a few problems um, addressing the what's called analytic approach to limits. And before you uh, watch this video or try the homework, please watch the lectures. Uh, they are nice and short, two minutes here, uh, three minutes here two minutes here so altogether it will take you like what 10 minutes or something eh, maybe 20 uh, but it, it will save you um, some time and this one I don't remember making this one but let's see what this is oh yeah that's a good one yeah that's a good one so basically this one says you only do analytic approach when you have no calculator or graphing device so how often does that happen in the 21st century I don't know, uh, but let's see. Let's take a look. Um, let's take a look at the homework, and 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 again, analytic approach means you treat um, you you just don't use any graphing or device or calculator, and. When you do analytic approach, you have to start recognizing patterns, right, and types of functions. So this function is a rational function, and um, when you're working with rational functions, what's important for you to understand is that uh, polynomials in the numerator and the denominator, oh, by the way, this is, uh, you also have to pay attention to the target value. So the target value here is negative one. So the first thing you want to do is you always want to plug in the target value into the function and see what happens. Can anything go wrong if you just throw negative one in there? I don't know, let's find out. Uh, and in this particular case, and for example, me particularly when I write my solutions to the limit problems, I like to use the brackets and do all the prep work, just trying different things inside of the brackets. So to isolate it from the, the rest of the solution, not to clutter the page either. And uh, here we have what? Negative one, minus one, it's minus two, plus three, it's one, over negative four, it's just negative one, four. So it appears that this function is defined uh, at negative one, and by the looks of it, it's just a continuous function. So the answer is negative one four. That's it. We we didn't have to do a thing. Uh, that's what happens when the function is continuous, but it's not always the case. Um, however, you should know that polynomials are always continuous. So when you're looking for the limit of a polynomial at some finite value, it's just as simple as evaluating the function at that value. Uh, this minus is a little off. So doing the math, what do we get? Um, 16 plus 622, so the answer is 24. That's another one, so we just need to evaluate it at negative 3. So going to be negative 3 squared 9 so we have negative 9 minus negative 3 it's plus 3 plus 4 divided by negative negative 3 minus 1 so the answer is negative 2 over 2 so it's just negative 1 uh, too easy So this gives an impression that all limits 
uh, like uh, it, it, it gives an impression that analytical approaches leads to nice answer all the time. It's not true. So there are plenty of problems that don't result in a simple um, strategy like this one. Uh, but here it does work. So plugging in negative 3, so we have negative 3 cubed, it's negative uh, 27 times negative 3, it's 81. 81 minus 2 is 79. Here we have negative 3 times negative 3, it's uh, 9 minus 3. So the answer is 79 over 6. And we're done with something, right? Uh, one out of five. That's going to be a long one, but uh, as a calculus student, uh, this this is good, um, good practice. Now remember, if at any point you feel tired, your brain hurts from all this analytical nonsense. Uh, one thing you can do is you can simply just pull out Desmos and find the answer with a graphing approach. Um, in this case, when we plug in one, what do we get? Uh, we get negative one third plus one third uh, divided by zero. So we get zero over zero. Uh, this is something that is called indeterminate form. And currently we don't know how to handle it. So we need to look um, into the function and recognize that this is just a uh, rational function and this rational function can be uh, rewritten uh, by simply simplifying the rational expression um, by let's say adding the fractions and writing it as a single fraction by adding the fractions I mean adding the fractions in the numerator so this actually can be rewritten as 3 over, so the common denominator is x minus 4. Uh, so it's going to be 3 minus x minus 4. And divide all that by x minus 1. Uh, and it's going to be the limit as x approaches to 1. And in the numerator, of the numerator, we have 3 minus x plus 4. Uh, why is it minus? It should be a plus over here, right? So it has 3 plus x minus 4, so it's x minus 1. So we have x minus 1, and we can write it as a single fraction now. And you can see how x minus 1 is just cancels. So the original function and this function have the same exact limit. But the difference between the original function and this function is that the original function had a discontinuity at 1, while this function doesn't have a discontinuity. So the answer is simply 1 over, uh, what is it, negative 9. So the answer is negative 1 ninth. And I really don't want to do every single homework here uh, because it will just be time consuming, uh, but I don't even have an option to skip this as an instructor. Where's my... Oh yeah, I do have an instructor cheat. Um, this problem is just a matter of rationalizing the numerator and you can follow that strategy and get the answer. However, if you decide to use Desmos here, that's fine too. Remember, I welcome this. And you can see that the graph uh, as of the function around negative 3 Again, at negative 3, it's undefined, but the function approaches to what? 0.25? 1 fourth? But if you rationalize the numerator, you'll see, and this is how it's done.
Why is so this is the solution to this problem? You rationalize the numerator, then the negative 2x minus 6 cancels, and then the new function doesn't have a discontinuity at that point. Um, rational function, uh, if you plug in 1 in here, let's see what's going on with one. So the uh, the analytic approach here will be to to factor the the numerator because I'm pretty sure. Let's see what happens when you plug in one uh, negative three plus five. That's two. Two minus two is zero. When you plug in one here, two minus eleven. Yeah. So one results in zeros in both the numerator and the denominator. So that means x minus one can be factored. And therefore, this function can be written as negative 3x minus 2 times x minus 1. Uh, similarly, similarly, this can be factored into x minus 1 times x 2x minus 9. So... The, the, the end result of this is what? Is that the limit will be equal to, uh, let me just put this here. Uh, it's going to be, where's my numerator? The 5x, 5x minus 2 is my numerator. So the numerator is negative 3x minus 2, x minus 1 divided by um, x minus 1 times 2x minus 9. And do you see what happens here? The x minus 1 is gone, and the only thing you have left is the other two terms. So to finish answering this question, we just have to evaluate the simplified version of this function at 1. So it's going to be 3 minus 2 1 and 2x minus 9 is negative 7. So the answer is 1 over 7. And there's a lot more problems here. I don't want to do it. So let, let me just browse through it real quick. Uh, here, this is a rational function. So you combine the two fractions into 1. And again, the zeros will be gone. And the answer will be negative one seven. Uh, for the, uh, as as this solution shows you, right? So you add these two together to form a single fraction, and then the answer is uh, the simplified version of that fraction evaluated at negative four. Uh, same idea. It's just uglier functions. So again, by now, definitely feel free to start using Desmos for graphing approach. Uh, this is pretty. This is pretty unguessable, even if you use Desmos. So maybe even try to use Wolfram Alpha for this one. Um, rationalize the denominator, uh, the numerator. So the more you practice, the more you start recognizing the same techniques. Here we have. Uh, Simplify, right? So uh, uh, simplify the numerator, distribute everything, combine like terms, and then you'll see how the numerator and denominator will have something in common, and that something common will be cancelled, and the simplified version can be evaluated at the target value. Same exact thing here. And that's only 3 out of 5. Can't wait to see what the other ones. Uh, oh, the other ones are actually pretty easy because polynomials at infinity, um, the behavior of a polynomial at infinity and negative infinity is fully determined by its leading coefficient and the power of the leading term. So in this case, negative x to the 4 means uh, it's even and the leading coefficient is negative, so both are uh, negative infinity. So the idea is that the entire polynomial at infinity behaves just like its leading term. 
So that whole polynomial, I'm not going to type the whole thing, but I will just type the leading term. So the entire polynomial behaves like the leading term. And if you don't believe me, okay, I'll type the whole thing. Do you see how it doesn't behave like that function in a local area around zero? But as you zoom out, you will see that they behave. Um, let's. They behave pretty much identical. All right. So when you're looking at the polynomial at infinity or negative infinity, it's sufficient to just consider the leading term. It's a nice rule. Uh, same here, right? 11x squared, just, it's a parabola, everything just goes up. That's a tricky question because this function is this uh, we're looking at infinity. This function has that's an interesting question, right? And the uh, analytical approach here it's a bit tricky and requires like careful execution. So I would suggest you to just uh, graph the function and uh, enjoy the um, enjoy the uh, graphing approach here. So as x approaches to infinity, the limit is uh, what negative one. And as x approaches to negative infinity, the limit will be positive one. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Where is it? Right there. Uh, or actually, zero point eight. No, it's going to be one. Uh, yeah, eventually it will be one. Or not. So uh, let's take a look. Um, as x approaches to negative infinity. So what happens here at negative infinity? Uh, at negative infinity, so remember, the polynomials act like they're living terms. So at negative infinity, you can just, you know, you can just remove this and this. Um, now, this, oh. Uh, no, well, the answer is not negative one either. That, hold on. Uh, we have to be careful here. So now, square root of, 3x squared can be written as square root of 3 times uh, square root of x uh, squared. But square root of x squared is what? It's just the absolute value of x. And when x is positive, absolute value of x is just x. So for positive values of x, we're going to get the negative square root of 3 um, over... Two. Now, when remember this was absolute value of x. When x was, oops. When x is negative, absolute value of x is actually the same as what? Same as negative x by the definition. So when negative x is cancelled, the answer will be just square root of three over two. So this question was a little trickier than, even trickier than I said. Um, but graphing alone didn't actually help us. So we have to, we still have to use the analytical approach here, which is good. Uh, there's no harm in, um, no damage is done to your brain when you're thinking hard. Uh, here, same thing. Uh, we can treat this. Let's take a look what it looks like before I say anything. Uh, 
first option. Interesting. So when x goes to infinity, it seems like it approaches to. Well, I'm afraid to guess now. 1.547. What does 1.547 uh, look like? Uh, 2.4. Yeah, I I'm not going to guess. Uh, but clearly, as x approaches to negative infinity, the answer is uh, infinity. So we can definitely answer that. Now, for the positive infinity, let's. Uh, Let's brainstorm this one. Uh, we can rationalize the, again, we can imagine that this is a fraction over 1, and we can rationalize the the numerator and when we do What's going to happen here? We have negative x uh, squared. We're going to have sorry. We, when we rationalize, we're changing the sign here, right? So this will be negative, negative. So we're going to have negative x plus here. So it's going to be. Instead of this, we're going to have this squared plus this, not plus, that's going to be minus, of course, minus this uh, squared. Um, and this can be further simplified. All right, so this is just your x squared. And this is just gets rid of the uh, radical. And we have to put plus over here. And now this cancels. And is this easy? Supposed to be, right? So as x goes to infinity. This goes to x squared. This whole goes to x, so it's minus x minus x, so it's minus 2x. So it's a 3x over negative 2x, so it's a 3 over negative 2. Is that what it looked like? Negative 1 half? I don't know, let's see. Yeah, it does look like it, right? So let's say it's negative 1 half. And yeah, that's the answer explanation. Uh, another power function. So the even power just means both ends are the same. The negative means uh, it's down, it's pointing down. So it's negative infinity, negative infinity. And how many more problems we have? Oh, another one. They just feel sorry for us, probably. Uh, rational functions. So rational functions are pretty easy to um, analyze. Uh, let me show you how you, you know, how you're supposed to analyze them uh, at infinities only, right? So. Um, what am I? What I'm about to tell you only works when x approaches to infinity or negative um, infinity. So the way we analyze rational functions is by using the fact that uh, the function behaves exactly the polynomial function at infinity or negative infinity behaves exactly the same as its leading term. So if it does that, if if it does behave like its leading term, then we don't need to consider anything but the leading term. But when you don't consider everything else, things get quite simple. So this gets simplified to this. And finally, it's just negative x squared. So this entire function, believe it or not, this entire function behaves just like parabola. Check this out. 
check this out. It didn't look like that, right? But when you zoom out, and if you graph the uh, parabola, you can see that it does behave like a parabola. Like this. At, as x approaches to infinity, right? Locally, it behaves crazy. But as x approaches to infinity, it behaves like a standard parabola. So the answer is negative infinity, negative infinity. And this works for all rational functions. So you can just take a rational function and uh, substitute the numerator with, or substitute every polynomial with just its leading term. And last problem. Let's just use Desmos for this one. It's getting late. Oh, it's going to be another one of those where we have to rationalize it, right? So, uh, as x goes to infinity, it goes to infinity. But as x goes to negative infinity, this is going to be something 0.75, I would expect. Nah. Is it? Eh, 0.75? Will it get there? I don't know. Can we just do a lucky guess? Uh, we shouldn't. So, but let me just pencil in 0.75. Uh, now, the proper approach, of course, is of course is to rationalize the numerator. And to rationalize the numerator, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of what we're trying to rationalize. Right, so conjugate means we're just going to put minus in here. And now this becomes, uh, we're just going to do the difference of squares formula, right? So 4x squared minus, and we're just going to remove the radical, and this is going to become plus. Okay, and you can see that 4x squared cancels, and we just get this, and as x goes to infinity, we can just ignore this term, and instead of 4x squared, we end up with 2 square root of x squared, but square root of x squared is just the absolute value of x, and when x is positive, uh, it's just going to be 2 Something's wrong here, hold on. Actually, no, sorry, we, we're doing negative infinity, right? So for positive infinity, we got it, it's gonna be infinity. But for negative infinity, this will become Plus. So the answer is three fourths. Yeah. Hopefully, this was the last problem. Yeah, it was. So again, analytical approach is the hardest one. Uh, but don't feel bad for using the graphing approach or uh, numerical approach to answer some of these questions, uh, regardless of what it's, which method it, it is asking you to use. Alright, as always, if you have any questions, reach out.